I think uh, for us as a brand, everything has to be unique. So sometimes we drive ourselves also crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DLF Mall's talk show, Beyond the Brand. Here we are today talking about another very unique footwear brand. Our guest today is the owner of a homegrown footwear label, which is making waves across the country. They have flagship stores in Mumbai and Delhi. And uh, dare say, now they are spreading their wings across the globe. Uh, the lady behind this very unique brand believes in strong ideology of sticking to the roots and yet coming up with something very contemporary and unique for the Indian woman. Without really wasting much time, let's welcome Lakshita Govil, the founder and CEO of Fizzy Goblet. I'm pleased to say that she's one of the youngest entrepreneurs out there. Uh, welcome, Lakshita. It's such a pleasure having you over from the show. What we'd like to really understand is that what inspired you to start Fizzy Goblet? Uh, and Fizzy G is what they are, <laughs> you are uniquely known as, right? Yes. So uh, what inspired you? Firstly, thank you so much, Ms. Vector, for having me on the show. I feel like I'm on Coffee with Karan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, so to answer your question, Fizzy Goblet basically started when I was actually in college. I was in Pearl Academy and I was a design student. And I was in my third year of college and I had seen a pair of statement shoes that I really liked and I wanted to purchase. But it turns out uh, that there was an extra zero at the end than I thought. <laughs> uh, so I decided that, okay, you know what, I'll make my own pair of shoes. And with that in mind, I got a pair of white sneakers. I painted them and I wore them to college the next day and they got a great reaction and people were placing orders and then my mommy, my aunt, she's like, okay, you have to put this up in an exhibition and you have to sell this. And so that's how I started and I got lots of orders. I got a lot of confidence. I realized that people other than me are also interested in statement shoes and in shoes that can, you know, uh, create an impact. So with that in mind, um, you know, I, I knew that shoes is where I wanted to go. But I also knew that that model is not very scalable and I needed a lot more experience. So I started working. I worked with uh, a few different brands. I worked with Puma. And then it occurred to me that how can we take the footwear forward is by actually drawing on the Indian root of an Indian juti. And it's a beautiful shape. It's very, it's like an Indian ballerina. But people weren't wearing it when we started eight years ago because people used to think it gives them shoe bites. So we thought, how do we make it more comfortable? So we did a lot of R&D, spent a lot of months researching on it, made it contemporary. And then that's kind of how Fizzy Goblet began really, to make the juti in fashion again. So when you say juti in fashion again, yeah. uh, we all grew up wearing kolapuris, and yes, the shoe bites were terrible at that point. Um, when you had to create that, what was the craft that you used? How did you make it so comfortable and yet so glamorous? Did you do some research on, uh, you know, feet and uh, the kind of different Indian feet that there is? So I think with the feet, I think the, one of the beauties about jutis is that there's no left or right. Mm. So they can actually take the shape of your foot. And this is a fact which surprises a lot of people who are not familiar with the juti. But um, so the interesting thing is, it's more about the technical part of the research about what kind of leather, what kind of, you know, padding that can go in, how can we make it more extra comfortable, what kind of pattern making will suit different types of feet. And, you know, you have all sorts, like in India, it's diverse in its culture, it's diverse in, diverse in its feet also. So you have to kind of figure, okay, thin feet, wider feet, flat foot, not flat foot, how do you make it work? So it was just that trying a lot on different people, doing a lot of like sampling research, and then coming to the final pattern, which works just for us. Yeah. So the other thing that really uh, appeals about Fizzy G is uh, the color. I just love the hue of colors that you come up with. And it, 
of course, matches with Indian outfits. Um, do you see this also as an Indo-Western thing? Can you mix and match with a Western outfit? And what do you think about that? Of course, I think I love it when people style jutis or anything like a kolapuri with jeans and like a kurta or like a shirt. I think it just adds that element of oomph to the outfit. Yeah. And it just makes a statement, you know. So true. Yeah. I just love it that these days, you know, lehengas are worn with sneakers. Yes. Or uh, <laughs> there yeah. is... There are um, no rules anymore. There are no rules. Yeah. It's just about being eclectic and being original. Yes. I think that's... Uh, and Fiziji is certainly an original <laughs> brand. Thank you. Uh, so, there are a lot of inspirations that you've drawn from, but what are those interesting collaborations that you've done and how would you like to talk about it? So, we've been very uh, fortunate to work with the best in the industry. I think uh, uh, now a friend and uh, an amazing designer, Payal Singhal, she was our first collaboration. And it happened very organically. She'd seen me at a pop-up at uh, Vintage Garden in Bombay. And she had asked me to do shoes for her, for her fashion show. And then we just really liked working with each other and our energies were just so in sync. We're like, okay, let's make this a longer term thing, you know. So it happened very organically and it ended up being like a wonderful collaboration. And we've worked so, um, we've experimented so much with prints on Jutis. We've also done a lot of different silhouettes and uh, it's been great. Rahul Mishra, of course, is an amazing couture designer, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, just stunning with his intricate details. Uh, it's been amazing working with him, with Tribe, Amrapali, and OPI as a nail polish collaboration, which we did a gift set with. So it's been great. I think it's always fun to, you know, work with other designers and everybody has such a different way of working. Yeah. So you kind of learn like how they do things is very different from how you would do it. So I think that's the really fun part, making something very new for the brand. That's true. And for the consumers. And another fun thing about your brand is the visual merchandising that you've done and your storefronts. It's so refreshing and different. Mm -hmm. uh, so what inspired you to come, you know, break away from the boring footwear store front? I think uh, for us as a brand, everything has to be unique. So sometimes we drive ourselves also crazy. <laughs> you know, we also we were like, okay, the packaging has to be different, the yeah. store has to be different. So we are very like we are very like particular that it shouldn't look run of the mill. Absolutely. That, so it's that experience. But I think one of our first stores was with DLF Promenade. Yes. And I think the team also showed a lot of vision and believing in our vision of how the store should look because it's something unique in terms of the hand embroidered facade which Absolutely. is there. Absolutely. So, and you know, the kind of space that you offered us was something that could really help us in bringing our vision to life. So, I think... I think the brand spoke <laughs> and rest was history. Yes. Uh, currently, you are uh, based out of Singapore? Yes. Uh, so, how difficult is it or easy is it to remote manage stores in India and <laughs> online? Can I tell you a secret? Tell you. It's actually not as hard as it looks. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so basically one of the most common questions I have is how do you do it? And I'm like, I'm always working. It's not like yeah. I'm in Singapore. I don't know what's happening in the country. So WhatsApp processes yeah. and an excellent team. Yeah, absolutely. So all of these things, plus I'm kind of like living on a plane most of the time in between <laughs> the countries. All of these things help. And it works, right? It works, yeah. yeah. And also, I must say that COVID taught us that remote working has its own charm. Yes. As long as you're coming back to the base and understanding on ground what's yes. happening, that's also important. But remotely, one can manage quite efficiently. Yes, it can be managed. The advantages and disadvantages, definitely. Yeah. I think it helps you see the bigger picture when you're working remotely or not caught up in the daily day-to-day -day activities as much. But you need to be on the ground Absolutely. and you need to connect with the team, the yes. people, the consumers. Nothing can take that away. I so I'm totally happy I agree. get to have totally like a mix. Agree. Yeah. All right then. Let's look at what's behind the brand. We all say that uh, we come in from different backgrounds and that influences a lot. So what's the kind of influence you feel you've had in your life? Uh, I keep hearing that your Nanima is one of your favorites. Yes. So uh, tell us a bit about your family. Okay. Uh, so I, I feel very, very lucky. It sounds so cliche and trope when I say this, but I've had the nicest and the most encouraging parents and I can't be more thankful for them. My mom has always encouraged me in everything I've done, like since I was a child. I think I began by actually like 
making cards from crayons that she had bought me and selling it to her for 50 rupees <laughs> us zamane mein yeah so, so you know she always made me feel as a market for my product uh-huh. <laughs> so, so that's something that i've always like you know taken it with me and of course my father and even like growing up i'm married now my husband is also amazing my sister so i'm like quite lucky have a nice supportive inner circle that's lovely yeah, so. that's lovely so uh, lakshita you used to sell candles i'm told <laughs> when you were a little girl yeah. i can just visualize that uh, starting from there yeah. to now uh, give me some one or two instances that made you want to get into your own space i think i like being my own boss One. <laughs> yeah so yeah and i you were a boss child and now a boss lady yeah. <laughs> i think my mom would agree <laughs> okay yeah and um i think i just enjoy like creating things and like watching people want them in their homes or want them in their lives that gives me an immense sense of satisfaction and then working with a team of people you know who have that same vision it's just so cool sometimes i'm like sitting in office and i'm thinking wow I get to do this as my job and that's the best feeling. Yeah. So they all say, right? When your passion becomes your profession. Yeah. Or your business, there's nothing like it. Correct. And work no is not work. also then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no day off. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You are an avid reader? Yes, I love books. So give me uh one or two books as a child what inspired you and currently what are you reading? Okay. Mm-hmm. I was heavily into fiction. I still am. but i used to read a lot of enid blyton roald dahl and you know all the magic far away tree and all the magical things i think i enjoyed that a lot i think uh, when i was when i was growing up and of course mystery books <laughs> now i'm currently into a lot of biographies and i love reading about businesses and i don't love sports but i love reading about athlete stories i think ah. so i like uh, biographies open I like Shoe Dog, um, and right now I'm reading The Art of War. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. currently into that. Lakshita, in an age where young girls are talking about Coldplay, uh, Eminem, I hear that you are into '80s music. It really warms my heart <laughs> because I'm into '80s music. Yeah. Uh, so, what's your favorite? I love. Uh, Aha uh-huh. I love U2 U2 uh-huh. is my favorite band I think uh, yeah I think you can just relate to every song that comes out of the thing We what's your favorite well it started with Jethro Tull uh-huh. then it moved on to a lot of Mark Knopfler yeah and of then course, moves on classics yeah. yes classics so um you know if life had to have a soundtrack then okay. what would it be Okay so for a soundtrack actually um have you seen Devil Wears Prada Yes so I love fashion and I love Anne Hathaway Of course we all like, do Yeah so there's this soundtrack and this montage when she's walking like suddenly I see Yeah this is where I want to be Yeah so I think that's my like that I would love that to be a uh, yeah <laughs> title track I think that's a wonderful one and it's one of my favorite movies yeah. So you started your brand in your early 20s right yeah. What's in your bucket list now? Uh it's too soon. You know, honestly I've never thought about things like a bucket list. Mm-hmm. It's always about like how do we grow? How do we do more? Or for me it's like how do I learn more? Like currently I'm really into like uh animal flow. I've just started it. I'm like barely like 2 weeks into it. Wow. But I know it's going to become like an obsession. It's like a cool thing of doing yoga and dance and hip hop. So it's all the things I like. So I think uh, yeah so just learning and growing trying new things becoming very good at what you already know yeah just just that for me is like an ever growing goal I see you goal. as an experimental and experiential person yes would that be a good one That's a nice way to put it yeah <laughs> <laughs> So you're the founder of a fantastic footwear brand but how many pairs of uh, great footwear do you have I only get fizzy goblets. <laughs> <laughs> I can't buy any other footwear brand. I feel like I'm cheating on fizzy if I ever do that. Except if it's like a sportswear thing because we don't make that yet. Yeah, yet. Yet. <laughs> so, I would be having all the samples. I don't have space in my house anymore, but there is always going to be like piled and piled of shoes of it. So, I think around 100 pairs I would be having. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not bad at all. Not bad, no. Not yeah. bad at all. So, uh, do you help out at home? You're in Singapore. I think yeah. you have no choice but to do, do a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we have to be independent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
I help out, yeah, I do help out at home, but I'm not the most domesticated person in the world. Yeah, I think, but I, but I can manage. Yeah. Yeah, I can manage, yeah. Tell us a bit about your husband. Oh, he's a wonderful man. I think uh, we've been together for 12 years now. Wow. Yeah, and married for seven. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's very supportive, very intelligent, always pushes me to do my best. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think we really help each other in in like learning and growing and yeah. That's very special. cool. So yeah. how did you meet him? I met him actually through a common friend. Okay. and That's the best way. Yeah, best way. Yeah, <laughs> then you know they're verified and referenced, you know. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> it gets a little tricky online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm happy I didn't have that age when I was going through. It's quite tricky nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So Lakshita, we've been having a lot of conversations about the brand, behind the brand. Let's have some fun now. <laughs> let's, let's look at um, some situations that okay. we'll throw you into. Okay. You can imagine and give crazy answers. What if you were a superhero? You okay. really are already a <laughs> uh, super girl, but yeah. what if you're having superpowers? Okay. What is that kind of superpower that you'd like to have? This, I know what I want. Huh. I need the ability to teleport. <laughs> I spend so much time on a plane, it's not funny. Yeah, if somebody could give me teleportation powers or just an apparition key, that would also work. Yeah. I think I'll take that one too. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to just go blitz off to San Francisco for yes. a day, come right back. Go to Melbourne maybe the Correct. next day. It will be fun. And not have jet lag. And not have jet lag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you were in a time machine and mm. you can travel for a whole year, yeah. where would you like to go? I think I'd want to go to the 1920s. And because I love Art Deco and I love the whole Gatsby oh, period. Yeah. And I want to go there and I want to like be in Europe at that time and like meet all the artists and be in Paris and the White Rabbit. And I think that would be a fun year. It's yeah. true. Yeah, I think that, that would be like a cool, a cool, cool period. period. Yeah, it was a very good period. So if you had that one wish yeah. that um, you had to be granted okay. for other people, okay. though, what would you wish for? For other people? Yeah. I think I just want like for other people as in like for the world or for, the for world, my family. For your family, it could be anything. Okay. For the world, I think just that everybody, I think if everybody focuses on living their best lives right. and their best version, then I think everybody would be happier and we'd all get along much better. So something <laughs> as simple as that, really. Yeah. Compatibility and zen. <laughs> yeah, just like if we focus more inward rather than outward. So true. Yeah, I think. We just Most of the strife is because people don't focus enough inward, right? Yeah, I think that will help. No? That will help. Yeah, let, yeah. I think true. So, yeah. so uh, Lakshita, one day, Fizzy Goblet's going to be this very large global brand and I see it in the near future. So, uh, and a biopic is going to be made. Who do you want playing your part? If you ask me, you can, but <laughs> who would be that one actor? Oh, thank you. I think that's really sweet. Firstly, fingers and toes crossed that <laughs> Fizzy Goblet yeah, reaches, the, uh, reaches the global stage as soon as possible. And... Then I think for me, I, I love a lot of, there's so many talented actors in the world. I think anyone, I love Anne Hathaway, I love uh, Alia Bhatt, I love Priyanka Chopra, Deepika Padukone. Like, I mean, there's so many versatile talents. Now. We'll yeah. take a pick there. You, yeah, I'll leave it. <laughs> yeah. So if you could see into the future, hmm. uh, what would you want to see? I don't want to see into the future. No? I don't want to see into the future. I want to take every day as it comes. And yeah. Yeah, you'd like to surf life, right? Yeah. Rather than stress about future. Yeah, if I see things and if it's something I don't like, then I'll worry. If it's something I like, then I'll wonder how to get there. So yeah, why exactly. bother with it? Yeah, exactly. take every day as it comes, yeah. no? So Lakshita, we have an interesting segment. It's called Noob or Pro. It's really <laughs> your um, ability to know the Gen Z. I'm told Alpha. Millennials apparently are passe now. So, uh, let's test your lingo power. What's basic? Basic means it's something that's very like low-key, it's something very like normal, it's something, yeah, very chill. Very chill. Yeah. And uh, drip? Drip. Uh, dripping, it's not very uh, exciting, it's like little like 
it's dripping. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> OG you would know. OG of course, original, yeah. The original, yeah, OG. Gangster. Yeah. You can describe yourself as an OG. Okay, sure. I'm an OG. <laughs> and so are you, Miss Vector. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Queen. Queen. Oh, that says it all, Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> Bussin. 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 Okay, like hustling, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's a dank? Dank. Sounds like it's dank. <laughs> it's supposed to be dank is excellent of a high quality. Oh, okay. Yeah. I My answer was just not that. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Jomo? Jomo, okay, yeah. This joy of missing out. Oh my God. <laughs> I had just reached FOMO. <laughs> no, there's a Jomo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's flex? Flex, you know when you, yeah, of course. Flex, when you've got something really cool and you yeah. want everyone to know, like flexing. the whole NFT craze that's going on. And like, I'm you know what's going on. Flexing my physique. Ah, good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's a bougie? Bougie is something that's very like, uh, like, like if you get like a bougie coffee, for yeah. example, like an overpriced coffee or like something that you're paying more for, which could be you could get it for less. Exactly. Like, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's a normal thing, but it's yeah. just getting all yeah. uh, hyped Correct. up. Hyped up, yeah. yeah. Like it's no cap. Sorry? No cap. No cap. Uh -huh. No capital. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it is no joke. I okay. didn't know this one. Yeah, <laughs> no cap. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've you been schooled. Do, you been you schooled. didn't do badly. And <laughs> I've learned a few. <laughs> I've learned a lot. <laughs> Here we have a great game waiting for you. We have this bag full of fizzy G uh, <laughs> shoes. All we want you to do is pair it up in 30 seconds flat. Are you game for it? I'm game for it. 30 seconds? Yep. 30 okay. seconds. Challenge accepted. All <laughs> right then. <laughs> so let's start the challenge now. <laughs> Done. All right. Are 30 seconds up? <laughs> oh, yay! Yeah. Oh, yes. my God! <laughs> yes. You did it. Okay, great. Lakshita, that was super, super fun. It was so good having you on the show. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you had some fun too. Thank you so much, Miss Bector. I think it was really, really nice. And you made me feel so comfortable. And I think you do that wow. with all your brands as well. You made me feel very comfortable when I entered uh, Promenade and Mall of India and many more to go with you guys. <laughs> and it's just the start. Yes, it's just the start. And yeah. today was so much fun. Thank you so much. Wish you all the very best. And uh, yeah, very soon, may the biopic be a reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.